here about to talk to Josie Kay. Now she's the scriptwriter behind a scripts in competition at Needs, Making Olivia. Congratulations. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No, you're more than welcome. So um, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and also the story behind the yeah. script. Um, well, I'm a comedian and a writer in LA and uh, I've been doing characters for a really long time. I started when I was about 21 on YouTube just doing like really weird stuff <laughs> and then I started just in the last few years I started doing uh, characters because I was trained in improv and sketch writing and stuff in both New York and LA. We should point out your backstory yeah. is actually really interesting. I know we talked about yeah. it, but yeah, sorry, interrupting. Yeah, you, um, so yeah, I, I actually I was having a hard time coming up with a new character, and my boyfriend at the time, well, he's still my boyfriend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, shit. It's not like, too late. <laughs> he he said, "Well, write. Don't just write something you like, but write something you love." And I was thinking about what do I love, and I love fashion documentaries and I'm just fascinated by them. And so I thought, well, I'd really love to make someone that's in that world, but since I'm a comedian, it's gonna have to be funny. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, and then um, I started improvising as Olivia, just in my living room in front of a camera, and it was really easy. Was and it always gonna be you, or did that come yeah. later? It no, was. it was always, it was yeah. Always be, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was just really fun and I realized I had a lot of material because I've watched so many fashion documentaries and studied up just kind of naturally because I love it so much that I, I knew a lot about it. Uh, so it was really easy to make fun of too. <laughs> so, now when you say you're a comedian, yeah. have you done stand-up? I have done a little bit of stand-up, not a ton. Um, How tough is I, I, I can't. Yeah. It's just a question I've always wanted to ask because I can't imagine it's hard enough standing up doing a wedding speech, as an example. Yeah. To actually stand in front of a lot must have been absolute killer. How on earth do you prepare for that? I mean, it's. I think it's more of you can't really prepare for how it feels, but the more you do it, the easier it gets, just like with anything else or like yeah, with writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the first stand-up that I did in New York, uh, I actually opened for a... a the very first time, I actually opened for um, a pretty amazing comedian that had toured and stuff. And the reason I got in the spot was there's this thing called barking. I don't know if they have that in the UK. Call it, sorry? They call it barking. 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 So no. it's so shady. What they do is they get a bunch of comedians that have you know no credits, not much experience, and they get you to go and sell tickets. And so I sold tickets at Times Square. And because I wasn't, um, you know, necessary, I didn't look scary, I ended up selling some tickets and I did better than most of the other guys because I was the only woman that was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I ended up selling like eight tickets and I got my spot and I, I opened um, and it was, it was really strange. And I made a little bit of money, which was the funny thing. Right. Yeah. Um, but I also, like the first time I went out at Times Square, it was probably like six. And then the second time I was supposed to go out and sell tickets, it was 10. And things shift in Times Square very dramatically from those hours. And so there was, literally, I got, I got proposed to by a guy on one of those uh, and like why wouldn't carts. You? Right, but he kept coming by and it wasn't, a, it wasn't a proposal of like, let's get married. He was like, I will pay you because I need a green card. <laughs> And, yeah, and I was like, yeah, I need to go. <laughs> Where was he from? Don't say he's British. No, we wouldn't stick that I think life. he was uh, maybe from Afghanistan, I think. Oh, God. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I was like, after that, and people were looking at me almost like I was hooking because I was, it, you know, Times Square, it just, it changed. And I was on, and I was like, "You want to see a comedy show?" And everyone was like, "What is this? What's happening?" So I actually went back and I told the guy, "Like, I'm, I'm done. Like, I already had my set." And uh, he was really pushy. He was like, "Get back out there, sell those tickets." And I was like, "I'm not a hooker." <laughs> so then I was like, "All it right." It can't have been enjoyable. No, it I've was pretty brutal. I've done something brutal. similar, and it is. Oh, it was not bad. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was one of my first experiences. But then I realized that that was one of the worst clubs because uh, he's fam the guy that runs it's famous for just being a bully. So because I know so you didn't mention it, and there's obviously, obviously you don't want to mention which what well, this yeah. no, I don't blame. Yeah, it. I won't ask, so don't <laughs> it's near Times Square. Right, okay, <laughs> so. it wouldn't be difficult to work it out. But yeah. You don't, yeah. So yeah. Did that, was that was that 
It's a silly question really, but yeah. oh, well, that's a pretty negative experience. It was in some ways. I mean, I was proud of myself that I that I got through it and stuff. But also, I learned like that's because his spiel beforehand was like, you know, all the greats do this. Chris Rock, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, they all were selling tickets, and I was like, no, that never happened, you know. So I mean, it was it was. I, I cannot felt imagine like, Chris Rock. Seriously, no, no. not in a million years. No. So after that, I was like, okay, that's not how I'm going to get into comedy. And then I started taking classes and training and things started to open up after that. I was like, okay, this is more legitimate. This is not. And I felt bad because I feel like a lot of stand-ups, they feel, I think why it wasn't right for me was because I didn't feel like it was creative enough. Like, because I feel like stand-up, there's a lot of tradition in it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, you do... You tell your jokes in this way, and it's kind of in a sad bar on a sad night, and you have to do that for 10 years before you can actually have a real audience. And I just wasn't willing to do that. So um, I decided to you know, do other things where it was a, a, maybe a more positive outlet for me. I mean... Because um, you're very kind. Yeah. We should point out here, I'm sorry, we'll get back to this, but um, you've been involved in like photography and this... Um, this YouTube, what was this again? It was not, and who is it that you were? Uh, you did tell me um, that famous person. Um, you, didn't you were involved in some kind of vlog? No, what was it? Oh, oh, for Joaquin Phoenix or for that? Um, do you know, I can't remember. I know you did a phenomenal amount of hits. Oh, oh. Am I thinking of something else? Maybe, yeah. I'm not I, sure. thought, I thought you were involved in vlogging or something. I have had, like, I've done sort of part vlog, part character stuff, and it's been a mix of that, because I've kind of changed it throughout the years, because I've had it about nine years, the YouTube channel, and it's right. done really well over time. It's grown a lot, um, which has just been really awesome. Um, I'm surprised that those projects tend to get people's, they get more noticed than maybe other stuff that I've done, where they actually, they're like, oh, you're on YouTube, I can go see your stuff, and they're like, oh, this is what you do, I get it. And I've gotten other jobs because of that, which has been great. And it's really apparent that, the, uh, as you know, I've looked on your website and I've seen the yeah. two you've done. Um, but this has been going on for some, because you were living in Australia when you were in... Yeah, we lived in Australia for, my family moved when I was 18 and we were there for uh, three years in total. Yeah, and we were in South Africa for a few months, in Canada for a couple years. Yeah. So I got to have a very, you know, spread out uh, experience of what the world was like, which was really important, I think. It's really well, helped me. Yeah, and I think we touched upon this. It's, it's sort of the stats about uh, North Americans not leaving North America to visit. I think it's quite a true stat. I can't remember whether they say it's like yeah. 7% or whatever. Yeah. If that is true, that's a true stat. That's astounding, really. Yeah. So I guess there's a huge slab of North Americans that are not experiencing, I'm not making any judgment, I'm just saying you know how it is. It's true. You know, yeah. other lifestyles and cultures, I'm not sure how different Australia is to America. Well, there must be differences, of course, it's a different country. Yeah. You'll probably tell me what they are. But even so, it's a surprise. But then again, you've, it's such a vast country, you could argue that you don't need to. I'm not yeah. saying that's my point of view, but. I mean, I feel like, for me, it was super important because I hadn't been anywhere else because we didn't, at the time, we didn't have, I feel like a lot of people just don't have the funds to, yeah, to do it. Um, and we had to because of my dad losing his job in the States. We had to leave. Yeah. Um, so that was there wasn't another option. Um, but I do feel like culturally in the States, there's not a push to go out and see the world, which I think is really sad because a lot of the people that I knew in high school you know, they haven't, maybe they've gone a couple places in the States, but they haven't really experienced because the world is a huge place and there's so much going on. And uh, I feel like with the U.S., we got very self-involved. Mm. And, I mean, it's really severe now. Uh, and I think hopefully that would change. I don't know. Because, I mean, what I, what I find in the U.S., what, I've, what being American means to me is being inclusive and to you know invite people in uh, rather than what I feel like what we're known for right now is shutting people out and I think that's it's really sad because this is not the America that you know I believe in that I'm passionate about um, yeah and uh, it's so interesting because if someone asked me 
what it meant to be British, I'd struggle to come up with an answer. Yeah. Because you kind of think, well, what does it mean to be British? Mm -hmm. You know, what is, what's the values that I believe in? I mean, I know what values I believe in, but to try and explain that is very hard. So to actually hear someone give you their point of view, it's really encouraging because I would struggle to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, thank goodness no one's ever asked me that because <laughs> I'd, I'd probably end up going, oh, I don't know, <laughs> you know. And then I'd come away thinking, I wish I'd given up. But I, the point I'm trying to make is it's very difficult to, for, for me personally, to to give an, an answer that mm -hmm. I would be comfortable with. So to hear it, it's really encouraging. Yeah. But it is, <clears throat> you know, obviously we're all well aware of what's going on with Brexit and Trump obviously getting in and we've got mm -hmm. points of view about that. But I suppose overall I don't, I don't want to live in a world where people are putting up barriers. It's the yeah. kind that's happening with us. Right. Because we're... I'm not sorry, this is about you, I know, but um, it makes us look, I think, insular and non-inviting and yeah. uh, a bit of a little Englander attitude, which I'm not right. particularly happy about. Yeah. You know, and because, you know, I, I have a personal point of view, I don't understand. It's a bigger picture than that, of course, I mean, it's about immigration, or people will say it's about immigration, yeah. economy, and all sorts of things, but I just think, well, look, you know, we're all connected. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. I don't know, it's, just, it, it's sad actually, yeah. it's very, very sad, and, but that's, yeah. you know, we've just got to deal with it, haven't we? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, sorry, I've gone off, I always do this, I've gone off piece, so, <laughs> yeah, so can, if we can get back to making it, so, you, you've built this with you playing the character, what, what is the end goal for this, because I, I, I understand it's kind of could be a short, but it could also be a series, it could be yeah. a feature, what, where's yeah. the direction that you're going I with? I mean, I really have... I have two two hopeful uh, directions that I like to go in with this. Um, I started with a short because I wanted to get it into film festivals, and I was actually planning to, to produce the short, but I decided to not do that and produce more of the web series so that I could get producers and other people to be interested in what we could do without sort of doing it twice. So I'm not, uh, because if somebody was interested in it, they wouldn't want to just take what I had. They would want to redo it. Embellish it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that's because that, that kind of was going to be my next question, is when you've done a project like this, it doesn't have to necessarily be this, but we use that as, a, as an example, because, mm -hmm. of course, <coughs> you, you experience stuff to know the gig, and what I mean by that is you know probably what to expect. So yeah. how difficult is it to go in with a project, for instance, we use that again as an example, yeah. and then someone say, "Look, we really like it, but actually, we want to cut this around this because you've got it. You know, you've got to deal with that pretty much. And yeah. how how do you deal with that? Because the project yeah. you walk out with may not be the project you that exactly. Was yours. Yeah, I think at this point, what I've learned is I'm 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 definitely preparing for that, and I, what I want to do is put my best foot forward and show because I have creative control right now. Mm. Show really uh, a really fantastic sample of what making Olivia could be and uh, then I have to be prepared for to negotiate with the powers that be on what changes are are what I'm willing to do um, yeah I mean I would really love it either I'm torn right now because I have a feature film script of this project as well as oh so you have covered the bases yeah, yeah as yeah. well as I have a TV pilot uh, for a series which was just an extension of the short, which was the short's 22 minutes and the uh, it's like 28 for the um, pilot. Right. So um, there's a lot of different, I have two different endings, you know, for if it was a series, it's gonna be a little bit different. And if it was a feature, it's, it'd be a little bit different. But um, I feel like she is a very strong character that can do a lot. And I'm also looking at doing some social, social media um, like interviews and stuff with her, with other people that are, you know. Um, well, when you've heard, you mean like a spoof interview? Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Kind of about? like uh, that she might comment and maybe she'll appear on someone else's YouTube channel and, you know. Because uh, I keep thinking of Anna, Anna Winter. I don't know if you, know, yeah. Yes. Um, and I, 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 I've no idea you based on her. I, yeah. I, you know, but then, I, then that's a kind of, because I mean, the hair isn't that dissimilar to hers, really, is it? Or nuclear winter, as I think she's referred to. Ah, yeah, like yeah. Winter, <laughs> allegedly, were right. with. Uh, and I know that's obviously been done before, but yeah. When I, when I any sort of particularly, um, um, this isn't a criticism, it's just a fact. That when I see any American t comedy series, which in the main are brilliant, mm -hmm. 
Mm. But I've noticed there's banks of writers working on them, isn't it? It's, not, it's very rare to have a single writer working. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that I'll have a team, like, if, if it does become a series, like, I'll have a team of writers and it'll, you know, I'll have a staff, a writing staff, for sure. Um, but, um, I mean, it, what's good is I know, in fact, like, one of the comedians that I've already worked with, his name's Vru Chi, and he's an uh, amazing comedian, and he's already, That's this him, guy, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's already like I have. I want him to play the assistant Alec because I I've worked with him. He's an amazing comedian, and I already know like he do the. I kind of wrote the part for him, um, so yeah. So yeah. have you actually got to a point where you've been pitching this, and there are people that are genuinely interested? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. I mean, there is a company. Uh, yeah, that they would like to actually help me. Uh, not not so much develop it, but they'd like to get me into you know, different um, streaming platforms and they have some doors and stuff to, to go through for that. So that would be great. Um, but I, what I, my kind of my goal with what you were asking was, I kind of think that Olivia Von Klimt, that she's, she's kind of like Borat, where oh I would, God. I oh would, God. I vision. would, yeah. A female Borat. Oh yeah, God, okay. where my goal is to have people believe that she's real. And that, right. um, yeah, that I would like her, like I have a Twitter and an Instagram of, of with her, um, but I would, you know, that's kind of the goal is that they would actually think that she's a real fashion designer. One of the ideas was actually for Olivia to go to New York Fashion Week in the fall and to do some, some videos and oh, stuff. Oh, that's clever, yeah. Yeah. So she's actually there. Yeah. In person, in character, I should say. Right. But at, really at the fashion. Yeah. So yeah. is that saying you'll, wh when is that? Uh, is that, that would be in the fall. I think it's in September uh, for New York Fashion Week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so are you still I thinking do about doing that? Probably, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. But see, that's a big gig, isn't it? Because you've suddenly got to become this character in real life. Right. Doing that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know you're professional enough to be able to do that. But even so. It must be quite a tall look because you suddenly got, yeah, okay, I've got to do that. How am I going to do that? Where's the crew going to come from? Right. How are we going to, how are we going to do it that we can do it in such a way that we'll be allowed to do it? Because that's something you've got to, how would you do that? How would you, how would you ensure that you're allowed to make this? Because presumably there's yeah. security and you've got to jump through hoops and. I mean, I would have to figure out uh Because you can't really film that really, can you? You're not there. Yeah, it depends on if we're going to be doing it like legitimately <laughs> legitimately or if we're going to be actually like watching shows which i don't think we would necessarily be able to do that but if we were uh like if we had clearance to actually get in you know we probably have to have a media clearance or something like that to be able to uh, to yeah. film us and um, you've got to fess so. up and tell them exactly what's about oh right? yeah definitely yeah so i don't know we'll see if it's a possibility i have to go email them <laughs> and, and when you when you're doing this do, do, do these things become all consuming or are you well aware that you've got to try and keep them and i'm putting words into your mouth i don't mean it like this the way i'm trying to explain it yeah not to keep them at arm's length but how do you how are you rigorous enough with yourself to make sure that this is very important but there's other projects that presumably you're working on the background oh yeah definitely yeah. so how do you sort of keep that um know, keep that keep it all going yeah keep it all going it's, it's really like a juggle because which i i actually really like because i get i'm a little bit like hyperactive where i feel most creative when i have a lot of different things going on um so like right now i'm juggling this and trying to get this kind of uh on its feet as well as i've got a pilot um for a, uh, a really young, up and coming 15 um, year old comedian. Yeah, you mentioned in LA. this when we talked. Yeah. yeah. Now, how's that going? It's going great. 15. Like, she's yeah. that, oh my God, yeah. that talented. Yeah, she's she's just amazingly charismatic. She's funny. It's sickening, isn't it? It is. <laughs> in she's a nice amazing. way. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, I see, and it's funny because I do see some of myself in her. Right. And it's been really fun to write the pilot for her, and I've just finished, and we're actually going to do a table read when I get back. That's a comedy, LA. another comedy. It's comedy, yeah. And it's different because it's, you know, like Olivia's very sort of adult humor. It's kind of crass. It's not, you know, for families. Mm. <laughs> and uh, It's like R-rated or whatever you'd call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so with this, it was a, a really different experience trying to write for 
basically for teenagers and write clean comedy. Can't say fuck. Can't say yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, because that's what I've been doing the last few years. Is like I haven't written anything for kids, so it was it was a little bit of a challenge to have to tone that down and still make it funny, which was a little bit tough. But once I started to get going, I was like, oh yeah, I can I can do this. Because there must be a huge appetite. I mean, I was thinking of someone like Miley Cyrus, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, she was 14, 15, I guess when she was. Right. Yeah. And I know that was of its time, but that's not that long ago. But even so, the point sort of trying to make is. There must be still a huge appetite if you've got the right um, idea, right? You know, and you can bring it. But it's of course finding that wonderful mix of the right people, the right the, right. the right to the person. That, yeah, yeah. And, and if I wouldn't have, Ila, her name is uh, Tabiana Ali. And if I wouldn't have met her, I and how did you? How did that come about? Oh, I um, so I was actually doing a showcase as an actor, and I had written a two-minute uh, character piece. And uh, one of the managers that was there, he talked to me afterwards, and you know, this the showcase was hopefully to get signed yeah, for representation. Yeah. And he didn't want to sign me, but he wanted to hire me. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. Ooh. He said, I have a young girl, and she's like, she was 14 at the time, and he said, I want somebody to, I want a female comedian to write a show for her. Um, and that's that's actually another project of writing a, a live 45-minute. Uh, character show mm. for her um, so we're in the midst of that and then I, I you know she's been having a hard time landing the right parts and I think it's because Hollywood doesn't understand her they don't know what how she's to capable deal of yeah yeah I mean she's lovely and she's easy to work with but um, I think she's you know I feel like I, what I told Tabby was you have to show producers you can't hope that they'll figure out what's great for you you have to show them it has to be right here for them to understand like oh this is this is what you're good at and this is you know um, this has a lot of possibility you have to be so explicitly clear um, in showing them what your talent is so when I wrote this for her um, I hopefully I think that it comes across of, of really what she's capable of because right. I can see incredible spark in her that gets me excited. I was like, well, I want to write something for you. And I, it, like it, I said, if I wouldn't have met her, I wouldn't be writing like a family comedy, but I believe in her, you know? And um, I really, I think we can do great stuff together, which is what my hope has always been with sort of relationships in Hollywood. That's what I've always wanted is to, I get really excited when I can help other people and we can do something together that's, yeah. you know, that's fun and, good quality and, so. when, and when you look back and <clears throat> are you kind of because it sounds to me as though you've got things are really happening so I hope so you know, it sounds like <laughs> this, you've got you know, lots of projects in the go but when you look yeah. when you're looking back at where and, and where you are now are you kind of pretty content with it I know you, I know you I mean I always believe that yeah people say good luck I think you make your own luck because you've yeah. got to, you've got to do it. Otherwise, it's, no one's going to give it to you. Are right. They? So, do you are you quite content with where you are? I know we probably want more. Everyone wants more. I do. I mean, part of me is, and I think it's just with me dealing with my own life and dealing with how I feel about my own life as I've done that in the last few years and been really honest with myself. Um, I start getting more and more content. But there has been, I'm extremely driven to the point where my family's like, no, you that, honestly, need to calm down. All filmmakers, <laughs> script writers are. And, and, and this is, it's what I spoke to uh, Molly about earlier, she's done that film Suicide. Yeah. And I actually asked the question, because I, I kind of knew the answer, actually sounds patronizing, but I do kind of know the answer, but I like asking the question, which is, you know, in your opinion, would you agree with me when I say that you need to be driven to succeed? And... The answer was, was yeah, it was kind of yeah, it was yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think no one's going to open the door, are they? Nope. And she was like, I was, I was at Cannes a couple of years ago, getting up at seven in the morning to right. network to work till three a.m. So right. there are no parties, they know anyone. And that kind of was like, do you know what? I can see you doing that, and I can under totally understand. Oh, I couldn't do it. See, that's the thing. Actually, the, that's the thing. <laughs> I haven't got the drive to do that at an age oh. all sorts of reasons, but <laughs> got to do it. Right. You've got to do it, and I totally admire that. And I suspect you're probably the same. 
maybe yeah yeah because i think you've got to haven't you <laughs> yeah. because you've got to it, it's a work ethic and it's right. a pushing eth ethic and i don't mean it in a way that's negative at all I, right. in fact it's the complete opposite i think you've got to just basically go for it right? right yeah and i think what i realized when i was i think i was about 21 and i auditioned for a student film and uh i had a panic attack like i was just it was one of the first auditions i ever a did a panic attack right yeah okay, right and uh, afterwards I, I was shaking and I was dizzy and I, you know, my parents were like, why are you doing this to yourself? This is not healthy, you know? And they actually, my mom was like, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this. And I was really like... Were you I felt, wavering? I was wavering. And then I, I ended up getting uh, Steve Martin's book, uh, Born Standing Up, and mm. I read that and it changed everything because um, I related to, you know, what he talked about. He talked about having panic attacks before his shows. Oh, so he'd been through all of that. Yeah, and which was amazing. And he was talking about how he he got so paranoid and he had all these anxiety problems. And I was like, this is how I feel, you know. And how he talked about his career developing and the more that he did, the better things got. And. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I, I can't wait on anybody. I can't wait on a student film to s tell me that I'm good enough to do their student film. And that's when I started my YouTube series. Yeah. And I, I was terrified of my own camera. I would turn it on and I would, I would feel sweaty and, you know, and oh, I Oh, mean, I've spoken to filmmakers that are literally they're behind the camera. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago and I've literally had them, because I always say to them, listen, we want you to feel comfortable. It's like we're talking now. We want you to be comfortable. I won't ask you any awkward questions, but if yeah. it's not for you, it, we totally understand because we would never pressure someone to do anything. If you right. said to me yesterday, "Let's do," do you know what's not going to go? Fine, no problem. I wouldn't badger you. It's just right. not right. And he said to me, the reason is he was complete control behind the camera, but in front of camera, I felt no pieces. No control. Yeah. And I've seen that before, but I, but I totally understand it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. You know, but it's interesting what you said about the stand-up comedy, and I, I suspect about doing the YouTube camera on yourself it must have been terrifying yeah but you get used to it didn't you it took a long time but I thought the more that I do it the better it's gonna get and it did I mm. mean and I the, I think the reason that it worked was because I stuck with it I didn't um, I didn't quit and you know I I went through a lot of like I, I felt unconfident and I would watch the videos and I hated them and and all of that and then somewhere in there I started getting a little bit more confidence and I started feeling a little bit better and I started having a bigger audience and um, and then I, I mean I also went through like people commenting and telling me horrible things and all of that really oh, oh so you terrible. had a troll you were trolling is that what they call uh, it yeah yeah basically so how do you deal with that I mean I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't deal with that well I mean I I got very emotional at one one of the things uh, I mean, just really horrific things to say to someone, and I, and I thought, you know what? Like, what really effect does it really have on me? Like, I'll be the same tomorrow. And don't read the comments, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It's difficult not to, isn't it? I mean, sometimes, sometimes I, I don't. Sometimes I do. They'll pop up, and I'll just end up reading them. But you know, also, I like I'm putting myself out there, and it's. I feel like another American thing is like freedom of speech like you have the right to tell me you don't like my face and that's fine you know like I had there was a guy there was a lot of like strange people but there was a guy that um, he would comment on every single video and be just enraged with me and he was saying I can't stand these videos and all this stuff and I was like well stop watching well, why are you, watching, why are you them, yeah. watching all of them <laughs> so it really doesn't matter like I mean and I feel like you know, if you were looking at a, I mean, it's just, it's your audience gets to talk back. That's all. Mm. Um, and it's different. It's a different age, but I mean, I think you kind of have to deal with it and go, well, that's fine. You know, I'm still going to do my thing and, and people will be drawn to whatever you're doing. The right people will be drawn to it. And I think if you can't take us, because let's be honest in this industry, yeah. Uh, as and Molly said it, because I said no, 95%, it's more like 99%. If you can't take 99% no's, you, you must be in the wrong industry, because you've right. got a thick hive, and yeah. to have a thick hive, you've got to be driven. So right. they're all kind of interlinked, aren't they? Yeah. Because you'd know pretty early on, I know you said you had that, a panic attack, so, yeah. and it made you reevaluate things, but of course there was something in you, I know you read the book, you was like, okay, no, I'm, 
fuck it, I'm going to carry on doing this for mm-hmm. whatever reason. But a lot of people, most people, I guess, would stop then. So right. you're probably in the minority in terms of if you had 100 people, I wonder how many of them were stuck. Of course, not many. Right. I certainly wouldn't. I don't mind saying that. I was just not for me. Yeah. Because I couldn't deal with the, those kind of comments. I couldn't deal with the, the endless no's. And yeah. you've got to have be a certain sort of way to, you know, deal with that. Right. That's it. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you very, very much.